Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. Although it takes some unearthing and polishing, with a little attention, we soon appreciate the brilliance of the once hidden gemstone. Today I'm going to be talking about the diamonds among the rough. That's right. In most people's minds, Nigeria and bad governance go hand in hand. Our leaders come to power with all manner of promises, or rigging in some cases, and can barely deliver on one complete project, let alone the many outlined in their campaign promises. However, every now and again, out of this mess and corruption cesspool, emerges a leader who understands what it truly means to lead, and that is to serve. Today, I want to celebrate two people that have really stood out for me, current governor of Oya State, Jay Mackinde, and Babagana Umara Zulum, current governor of Borno State. First, let's look at engineer Shea Mackindy, who hit the ground running, delivering in very little time. He set out a four-point agenda, which captures the essence of human existential realities, including economic expansion through agriculture value chains, security, health, and education. Within his first 100 days, the governor's many achievements include procurement of 100 surveillance vehicles to strengthen security agencies across the state, cancellation of all levies paid in public schools in Oyo State, and replicating free education initiatives from the Awolowo era. There is now regular full payment of salaries, pensions are now paid monthly, and the youths have been energized and hugely empowered. Under this 52-year-old governor is a 32-year-old uh, as a speaker and a 27-year-old commissioner. Oyo State is now peaceful, highly promising state due to this man's vision and execution. Babagana Omara Zulum, a professor of agricultural engineering with no real political pedigree who was elected despite the odds, has proven to be quite the revelation. He has ensured that discipline in the civil service returned, salaries paid up to date and on time, and that includes leave salaries. Despite the constant threat of Boko Haram, Zulum has still managed to embark on the rehabilitation of infrastructures such as schools, hospitals and communities, all within his first 100 days. Houses destroyed by Boko Haram have been reconstructed, the palace has been renovated, and at least two and a half kilometers of road have been built. I will stop here, but do go and look these two outstanding governors up. And when I say outstanding, yes, it's not that difficult to be outstanding in this country. Anyway, they truly are worth celebrating. These men didn't come to play party politics. They came to serve their people as true leaders do. Mm. Yeah, truly. I think this man went around visiting the Southeast states when he became a governor. Which um, man are you speaking of? Uh, Mackinde, you know. Um, I mean, Mackinde is playing, uh, you know, he's, he's doing what looks like a very good uh, job. Oh, good. Um, I just, you know, when, when you're <laughs> Nigerian, you have to be suspicious. You know, it's like a policeman and there's something going on. You don't just see things and think everything's fine here. <laughs> In fact, the finer they get, the more you're worried. So I, I, I can only hope that Mackinde, who has declared that he's a very rich man, um, very, very rich actually, um, and does not need anybody's Steel. money, not, not, less, not least um, or your state's money, uh, that that's exactly what's going to happen. And that finally we've, we're going to see one of the first Nigerians that will, you know, that will Shows uh, the, the way to lead. Mm -hmm. I mean, he went round in the beginning, going from one state to the other, as if he was 
sort of giving support to the governor there, but more importantly, as if he was bringing his message to that governor, as if to say, I'm here to support you if you look at what I, I think am he was doing. A PDP and and boy, yeah, they, were P, really. they were PDP guys, yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, um, so I like what I'm seeing so far. Yeah. I just am very, very suspicious. suspicious. Uh, to add to, to that, um, maybe my standards here are too high. Mm. Uh, coupled with the fact, <laughs> and I'm surprised. Uh, coupled with the fact also that um, I have, um, I'm, I have seen insider knowledge. I've seen, you know, apart from insider knowledge, I've seen outsider okay. performance. Mm -hmm. I've seen what it takes to be to govern a state. Yeah. Okay. I've seen, you know, states working without having to make noise. Or, uh, you know, here we we are quick to celebrate. Uh, first hundred days, one year in office, and all of that. I have high hopes of governance because based on the promises made, and and so what I do, I tick the box. You know, these promises have this one will be met, and so there's still a long time. If you if you remember when Buhari came on board, light suddenly started working. You know, and people were like, oh, his body language. Yeah. And, you okay, know, the yeah. man had not mm. even said anything. His body language. language yeah. But when we now expected the body language, you know, to begin to to talk. All of a sudden, it died down. So, in the same vein, for me, it's too early to begin to excellence his excellence. Hmm. Okay, let me. I, because you want to, yeah, yeah. I, I, I want to. I would like to tell uh, Uche's line that we should celebrate, you know, uh, governors that are uh, doing something, do, doing well. Yeah, mm -hmm. that are doing something mm -hmm. a little bit different. You know, who want to add value, and we're seeing that they're moving in that direction. You know, caring less if their intention because we can't you yes. can't speak for them what they're Correct, yeah. doing is what we're seeing and we yeah. should give them credit mm. um, I would want to add that, that there are some other governors I think are also making strides in their states oh, like uh, Kaduna State I, Elder Fire. Elder no, I, I, I kind of I like <laughs> his, 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 his open government I think once we can hold our leaders accountable is a first step is one of the things we lack yeah, we need accountability. The governor of Zamfara State is doing very well. At least there's some level of uh, uh, sign of security. Mm -hmm. He's working okay, security. Zamfara. And so, yeah, we should celebrate these people, but we should also not relent mm -hmm. to hold them accountable. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, so right, let me come in. With case, Uche's case. standard, yeah. <laughs> the governors you have mentioned, yeah. yes, even, and even more. Yes. Okay, no? yes. so let, me just quickly, let me quickly pitch in and say, yes, I think it's laudable. In a sense, even though Libras may be different to most, most, the average Nigerian in my mind, because he's actually keeping a check of their promises. You know, my impression of Nigerians and the way we relate to engage with governance is that we don't pay attention to the promises, we don't hold them accountable, we don't monitor what they're doing. We just look at doing. the road uh, No, we, yeah, we do even look at the road We just, we are quick to complain without having specifics to sort of okay. say, what are we measuring? them up against. Okay. So you, you, maybe you complain when something specific affects your pocket, then you jump up and you complain. But you don't actually have any way of saying, what has this guy done? So I'm mm -hmm. happy to even hear, one, the one that impressed me is that young commissioner, yeah. you know? And you know, just having that person in that position is an achievement. It's completely different to this old guard. Mm -hmm. Because it means that at least you have someone who's thinking hopefully differently. I know we have some Senator Abuam mm -hmm. types who can mess up, but mm -hmm. I'm happy that Governor that guy... Kogi stage is a young guy. And we're happy. Whenever we see fresh, <laughs> fresh talent, we're happy because it's up to us. <laughs> but but, but that, that's outside. I, I also reminded me, because when she, she talked about this to me initially, I said, yes, sometimes the impression is that nothing good can come out of government. And it's just a reminder that, because I know recently I had the privilege of being alongside one of these government officials, and I saw how tirelessly he was working. Now, I could be suspicious and say what was that, but I, you know, the back story is that here is somebody who was really not feeling very well, but left the hospital and was rigorously doing his job. Mm -hmm. So there are people in the midst of all that, the diamond in the rough, mm -hmm. who are still, so we need to not only celebrate them, you know, to hold them up for others so that they'll be challenged, mm -hmm. but like um, Sadie said, keep on, you know, monitoring them and keep on letting them know that we're watching them and we actually yeah, For me, what I do you know? is, um, mm -hmm. it's not just about, I look at primary heads, because the, those project, those programs you promise that touch directly the life of the people. Okay. Mm -hmm. Primary head, primary education, you know, basic mm -hmm. primary things. Mm -hmm. And then I also look at the cost. If you tell me 
we've tied a road, a two kilometer road. What is the cost? Mm -hmm. Or what's the yeah. cost? How what ordinarily, how much did they spend? Because you find out sometimes this cost is times four. Yeah. <laughs> you know, in some yeah, places. So the money has been stolen. But you have, you have the bridge. Mm -hmm. it, it would have been built, even though it's expensive. It's mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. You know, you can question it. But, you're still but when you do that, the but when you do they that, the, the, money, the, the money <laughs> meant yeah, to it, do other things. Other things, yes. Because you're hemorrhaging. But we've been in a country where even the money meant to do it's not going anywhere. It's not dull but you know, the, let yeah, me you just, just even That's give an, an extra update, uh, nice give sense. an update yeah. on Shay McIndy. Um, only yesterday I read that he's also, there's going to be free health care for all your residents now okay. because he's gone in, he's working in conjunction with missions in order to provide this. So I, he's, he's thinking, he's thinking and he's really, help. he's really trying. So I, I really believe that even though it may seem too early to celebrate, it's an encouragement. Yes. Maybe yeah. if we put this out there, other governors that are not performing Challenge might them. want to get what this. Saying, Rocha as Rocha, <laughs> when he came, all he these things were free. But where the facilities are available to even you know ensure that these uh, checks are carried out, that's where I, for me I say my standards are high. I look at, I tick the box. First and foremost, the facility. I've had cost to visit primary health centers, and if you see what the average Nigerian go through in those places, mm. so if the facilities are not created. No matter how free the people come, they would rather be under the tree. Mm -hmm. okay. And then you see so, pictures of people receiving free mm -hmm. head care under the tree. It creates more problems than the solution. <laughs> yeah, also. well, I, I agree, but we must start from somewhere. Mm. All right, well, like Libera said at the beginning, we are as much about celebrating the good as we are about critiquing the bad. The bottom line, we are advocates for a better society. So let's keep at it as you keep your comments coming in on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to www.plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. We'll be here next week, same time. Till then, let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye for now. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.